Welcome to May is National Physical Fitness and Sports Month with Department of Parks and Recreation, Prince George's County. This is your home each week to stay healthy and motivated. Let's live more, play more indoors. Hi, I'm Tisha and today we're learning about setting goals. We'll learn about the different goals and how to set them, goal setting guidelines and common problems, and different goal setting formulas. Before we jump into everything, we have to understand the definition of goals. A goal is an objective or an accomplishment that you're trying to reach within a time limit. A long-term goals are goals that you set for the future. Short-term goals are stepping blocks that you use to reach your long-term goal. And short-term goals can stand alone just in a shorter time frame. A performance goals are goals where you're competing against your past self or your past performance. Process goals are the steps that you take when you're engaging in your performance goals. And outcome goals represent the standards of performance that focus on the result. Here are 10 important guidelines that you have to follow when setting goals. Set specific goals in measurable and behavioral terms. Set moderately difficult but realistic goals. Set short-term goals and long-term goals. Set process goals, performance goals, and outcome goals. Set goals for work, performance, presentations, fitness, athletics, anything you need to set a goal for. Set positive goals as opposed to negative goals. Identify target dates for attaining goals. Identify ways to achieve your goals. Record your goals once you have identified them. Ask for feedback and support on your goals. Now here are five common problems that people usually have when setting goals. Number one, setting too many goals. Number two, failing to recognize the individual differences when it comes to your goals. Number three, setting goals that are too general. Number four, failing to set performance and process goals. And number five, failing to create a supportive atmosphere. Before we get into talking about the different ways you can set goals, we're gonna briefly go over the benefits and the three phases of goal setting. The benefits of goal setting is increased performance, increased positive thoughts, and increased confidence. The three phases of goal setting include, number one, the setting phase. In this phase, you need to be able to identify the goal that you have, the end date, where you are currently, where you wanna be. You need to be able to set short-term goals, performance goals, process goals, and be able to map out everything that you need to do in this goal setting journey before you even begin to execute your goal. Phase number two, the execution phase. When executing your goal, you want to keep it somewhere where you can see it, whether you hang it up on your mirror, whether it's in your locker, on your desk, in your phone, wherever you have it, you need to be able to go back to it, review it, see what you need to do the next day, see what you've already done, see how far you come, and continue to execute that goal. And phase number three, the evaluation phase. In this phase, you need to be able to evaluate your goals. You need to be able to see what you did well, what you need to do better. Whether you've actually hit your goal or not, you need to see and determine everything about your goal. Did you get enough help? Did you have enough support? Did you go and speak to someone when you didn't understand the next phase or what did you need to do to continue to hit your goal? The evaluation phase is all about reflecting and evaluating your goals. Now, getting into goal setting strategies and different ways to set goals, you can simply just write your goal down on paper. You know, your long-term goal, a date, and all the steps that you need to take in order to reach that long-term goal. Or if you're more of a visual learner or, you know, you want to be a little more creative with your goals, you can use a goal staircase. 
this gold staircase looks just like a regular staircase that you will walk up on. The first step, you will record your present ability, where you are now. At the very top of this staircase, you will record your long-term goal. Don't forget to include the end date. Now, on the steps between your present ability, the first step, and your long-term goal, the last step, you are going to record your short-term goals. Your short-term goals should also have end dates so that you're staying close and staying within the range of your long-term goal end date. These short-term goals should be stepping blocks to your long-term goal. For example, short-term goal number one should be a short-term goal that leads you to short-term goal number two. Short-term goal number two should also be a goal that leads you to short-term goal number three. And short-term goal number three should be the goal that leads you to short to the long-term goal. So each goal is helping the next goal reach the long-term goal. With the goal achievement card, you have a slot where you can record all of your skills related to the activity that you're trying to improve or do. From there, you can rate yourself on whether you need improvements, whether your skill is average or is strong. Taking whatever skill you need improvement on, you can go ahead and set a goal for that particular skill or goal. Then you can go ahead and set the strategy that you need to do in order to reach that goal and improve that skill. And then, of course, you record your end date. This one is a great one because you can actually let someone else, whether it's a coach, a manager, a parent, etc., go ahead and fill out whether they think that you need improvement, average, or you're pretty strong. Of course, you will have to sit in on this because everyone's gauge of your skills can be different. But having that feedback and that support from a superior isn't a bad idea. Outcome goals could be set for any type of goal. What outcome do you want from this particular goal? So if your outcome is to get better to beat your opponent or get better to take someone's starting position or get better to win the promotion at work, then that is the outcome that you are trying to achieve. Now, with performance goals, again, performance goals are competing against your past performance. So if last week you ran a mile in nine minutes, but this week your performance goal would be to beat that nine minute mile and run the goal, run your mile in, let's say, seven minutes and 30 seconds. That is your performance goal because you're trying to beat your last performance. Now, your process goals related to your performance goal can be something like keep your arms up when you're running. You know, when you get tired, your arms might drop. And we know that if your arms stop or your arms slow down, so will your legs. OK, it could be a process goal could be to remember to breathe. Sometimes when we're exercising or trying to hit our fitness goals, we tend to hold our breath. OK, remembering to breathe so that you could get oxygen in and out could be a process goal. And another process goal could be to focus on the positives, focus on the finish line. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the pain that we're feeling or the exhaustion that we're feeling that those negative feelings can slow us down or stop us from ultimately paying attention to the positive and the finish line. Thank you all for spending time with me as I teach you all about setting goals. Please take a moment to look at the pictures that follows so that you can get a visual of the goal staircase and the goal achievement card. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in again for the next May is National Physical Fitness and Sports Month video with the Department of Parks and Recreation, Prince George's County. Tell a friend this is the place to live more, play more indoors.